Alright guys, so we're going to continue from where we left off. And uh, before we continue, as I was saying, we can now reduce... I mean, I found a way for us to be able to reduce the brightness of the blueprints here. So we're going to do this one by one. Select each of the blueprints and do this. So let's take the front one first. So with that selected, just click here in the object panel here, right here. And um, yeah, no, instead click on the image panel here first, right here. And you can see it says use alpha over here, enable that. And you can see that drops the brightness a little bit. So once you enable use alpha, it drops the brightness. Now we're going to feather drop it down to about 0.5. So just type in 0.5 in here to do that, like that. So if we go in front view, it's not as bright anymore. And I think that is a decent amount of brightness we can use. So let's do that for each of these uh, images that we have here. Now, before we actually deselect this one, let's go back to the object panel here. And uh, in the object, is it is this the object panel? Yeah. So in the objects panel, I think it's visibility. Yeah. So disable selectable here. Uncheck it like that. So that way we can't mistakenly select this object anymore. That means it's not going to be accessible. We can't select it until we re-enable this. So you can see when we re-enabled it, now we can select it. But if we disable it, it can't be selected anymore. So let's do that for each and every single blueprint we have in here. So I'm going to take this one as well. Let's disable the selectable. First, let's enable the alpha, change this to 0.5 and disable the selectable. Do the same with this as well. Use alpha, 0.5, and disable the selectable. And the uh, visibility yeah, right here. So I think we did that for this. So yeah, so this is the final one. So go down, use alpha, change this to 0.5, and disable selectable. Alright, so like I was saying, let's just um, get in here, select all of these. Uh, I mean, taking a look at this, you can see these. Uh, this hood goes all the way back here. Ignore these. this line, this cutout over here, just ignore it. Just assume there was no cutout there. So you can see it continues all the way back and it goes up to form the windscreen. So that is what we're going to create now, the frame for the windscreen and the whole windscreen. We're going to create a shrink wrap guide for it. So let's take all the edges here let's get onto the side view and make sure they are on the line so right now it's over here and this is the line we're trying to move it up to this very one over here this is the cutout line but as I was saying let's ignore that so let's just extend this all the way to here so press ctrl and r through here press e to align it with this side and move that close to it like that now take this side press g twice slide it back then press c to constrain the angle move that beyond the line which we're looking for. So you can see it's beyond it. Now let's go to the top view. Go into wireframe. And this is the line we want to cut it out from. So zoom in right here. Press K. Move the knife to the very center here. Like this. Before I do that, let me just do this for you guys real quick. Yeah, so just press K. Move the mount to the center right here. Left click. And then move all the way to the next edge here and left click in the middle of the blueprint line like that to the next one here but you can see there's no blueprint line here but looking at the line through the middle here just make sure it falls in the middle like that and left click do the same thing over here in fact it's already showing and over here we're just going to drag it all the way back like that and left click then press spacebar or enter to confirm it now hold down alt and select this hold down alt and select it again so it doesn't select all the way around Press X and delete that vertex. Alright, that is looking good. So let's get to the side view. And you can see we have that over there. It's not following this blueprint line, but we're going to keep it there like that. You are not always going to get your distance to follow the blueprint line. I mean your mesh to follow the blueprint line as much. So, so let's select this edge now. We're going to extrude it all the way up to here, as we're seeing. So let's do that now. Let's press E, extrude that all the way up to there and let's select the very this one make it the active selection there I'm gonna press S and Z 
if you haven't just changed the pivot point to active element so we can scale on that active element so press s and then z type in zero like that let's go into front view and you can see that right here so let's just press G and then Z, move it down until it falls on a line like that. Ignore the line, the curvature over here, just put it on a line like that. In fact, we're going to send it beyond it a little bit like that. Maybe that's too much, so let's just bring it down a little bit to about the tip like that. So let's get onto the side and make sure it's in the center over here as well. And as you can see, just press G and then Y and it falls in the center like that. Yeah, so let's get into front view now. And we're going to scale this in. If you take a look over here, these clustered vertices here are in the middle of this black piece here. This black piece, which is this blueprint line over here, they're in the middle. So we're going to scale this up onto this side. It's also in the middle of this area here. So press S and then X to scale towards the active element. And make sure all the clustered vertices are in the middle. Like that. So they're in the middle of, between these two lines. Like that. Just like it is over here, let's select everything and make sure that is what it is, yeah. So that is accurate, like that. So we'll leave it in there like that. So we want to make this more flat. As you can see, the bevel is continuing up there, so that's what we're going to fix right now. For this side, we're not going to do anything to it because the black area is covering it, so it would be a uh, useless job trying to fix that area to be flat as well. In fact, I think it kind of makes sense that this side is flat on the side as well. Maybe it is on the inside there, we can see it. In fact, it is on the inside there, it's obvious. Because you can see, as it gets to the edge, it needs to bend in to create that area. Or maybe it is not. But that is what we're going to do now. But we ignore this side because it's clearly not visible. That black thing is covering that area here. So if we do it, it, it will be useless. Don't bother yourself trying to fix it. Fixing it is only going to waste your time and it might not even look better anyway. So let's just fix this area. Now get into edit mode. And first off, let's, let's just take, let me press Ctrl and R through here. Press E to align it with the bottom and move it very close to it like, like that. And I'll get on down here, this very line here, one, two, three, this vertex here, select it. Hold on Ctrl and Shift and click on that one to select all that area. Now press Shift and D to duplicate it and press P and select Selection to separate that selection. So now it's a separate object from this one which we can also edit separately. So let's get in here now. Let's not tab out of editable, let's get in here now. And let's select this one and hold Ctrl and left right click on this one or your selection key. And press G twice, we're going to slide it to the center. In fact, let's select the one below as well. So let's get into wireframe and let's select this one as well. Hold on control and select that one as well. And we're going to press G twice, slide it to about here, about here. And then deselect this one, slide this one also to about the middle, like that. So you can see that lies in the middle. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one over here. So just select the vertex here. Hold down control and select this one as well. So press G twice, slide this to the side a bit. Deselect that one, press G twice and slide this to the center like that. So that is what we wanted to do. So let's get back into solid view. And let's get out of edit mode. And let's select the new object that we separated now. Go into edit mode, the new object here. Go into edit mode, select this edge here, select the one on the other side as well, those that were forming the bevel, select them and press X and choose dissolve edges. Do the same with the last one in the middle here, press X, dissolve edges, like that. So now you can see we have a rounded surface over here, in fact when I enable the mat cap real quick, which is, hold on, yeah, so enable that mat cap real quick, let's hide this. You can see that area is flat now, but the subdivision surface is rounding it off. We don't want that for the shrink wrap, I mean to fix that windscreen. So let's select all the outer edges first. Let's change to edge select mode. Select all of the outer edges now. Press shift and E and type in one. Alright, so you can see it sharpens up all that edges for us. That is what we're looking for. And I'm going to move them a bit more past where they initially are. So press G twice, move this in a little bit. No, I mean, I think it has selected all the way around. 
we just need this edge so let's change back to vertex hold down control and select that edge alone press G twice and then C and move it a little bit beyond what it was before so you can see this is what it was before this is what it is now I think that might be too much let's try it again G twice and then C like that so that's much better do the same with this side G twice slide it down and then C move it up that's better do the same with the bottom G twice slide it up and then C slide it down so that's much better so you can see we have this now so we're going to press alt and H bring back our other uh, mesh and then go into edit mode and this time we're going to select again from here so hold down shift and select yeah that one and go all the way up here hold down shift and control and select that one as well and now let me make sure I have the right one selected yeah I think I do yeah yeah so we're gonna press control and I to invert the selection yeah so control and I to invert the selection and press H to hide them now select everything by pressing A like this and um, yeah so after selecting that just click right here on this button here and change it from increment to face and after that enable project individual elements here once you do that, just press G and hold down control. And as you can see, it shrink wraps itself or attaches itself to the very surface while you're holding down control. So keep your hand on the control and press enter to confirm it. So you can see if we hide this now, the very first object, let's hide it. You can see we have that smooth surface here now. That is what we're looking for. So this is what it was before. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's just keep it. I'm not going to show you that. So let's give it. This is what we're trying to achieve. I wanted to show you guys what it was before, but this is in Blender 2.79, so things are a little bit different. So this is what you should have at the end, a very flat surface, which is what we're going for. So let's get onto the side view and make sure everything lines up like that. That is good. Let's get to the front. Yeah, so everything lines up. We don't need to do anything else. Now I'm going to press Alt and H. Select the guide mesh, I mean this one here and delete it. Now let's get into this one. Press Alt and H to bring back everything else. Press Ctrl and R here. Press E to align it with the bottom and drag it close to it like that. Do the same with this side. Press Ctrl and R through here. Press E. Move it in here. Now we're going to move this one in a little bit but if we just slide it you can see those vertices try to slide, I mean start to slide apart and we don't want that. We, don't, we want to keep them together as they are over here in front here. So just press G twice, slide it back, and then press C to constrain the angle, and then move that forward, like that. So you can see what we have is what we're looking for. I'm going to do the same thing here, press G twice, slide it up, C, and then move that down to about there. So that looks nice. I'm just going to slide these a little bit more in, because they're too far apart. And that one as well. Slide it a little bit more in. Yeah. So that was what I was going for. This is the look I was going for. Very nice. So you guys should have this on the end. Let me just change the markup back to the reflective one. You can see it looks a lot like it now. It looks so much more like it. Yeah. So this is where we'll end in this video and continue in the next video. So See you guys in the next video. Alright, one more thing before we go guys is uh, if you take a look up here. If you take a look up here, you can see we have the collection and we have all these um, other things in here. These were the images that we added in the front, back, side and top. And this is the plane we have selected right now. This, this thing here is what they're calling a plane. That's what we have selected right now. So they, these... This thing you see in here acts more like the frames in Blender 2.79, but this time they got rid of it and gave us this instead. So here's what we're going to do. This is the first collection, so let's rename that to, double click on it to rename it, and let's name that Blueprints, like this. 
but then this one is not is not a blueprint but it's under the blueprints collection so we're going to move that into a new collection so just select that one press m and then add in a new collection now we're going to call that um um meshes let's just call them meshes all right so let's just call them meshes or something let me say yeah let's just call them meshes for now we might change it along the way and click on ok so you can see it moves it into that area now so if we if we are to hide anything like say we want to hide the blueprints we can just click on this and all the blueprints will be hidden but this will be available for us we can click that to view it same applies to this we can click it it hides that but the blueprints will be there so that was what I wanted you guys to see and that in case you're not seeing any frames here this is what they this is what it has, it has been changed to now so this is what you work with all right i'll see you guys in the next video